for children roughly from the ages 6 to 14. And in Germany, full-time schooling is both mandatory and it's free. Now, because ed ed education is still administered by the individual states, which, by the way, remain relatively autonomous, there is, there's considerable, considerable variety across the country. But most of the states have a three-step system that begins with four years of primary school for children ages roughly six to nine. Most importantly, one subsequent educational track, and indeed one's whole career pathway, is then structured during the next two years. The so-called orientation grades when students are between 10 and 11 years of age. A in other words, by age 11, the trajectory of one's life has already been determined to a significant extent. Those who are headed to university or to the higher technical institutes attend the eight-year academic junior and senior high school called the gymnasium, with graduation at age 19 after the abitur, the examination. The three academic tracks in the high school are still divided among the classical languages of Greek and Latin, modern languages, and math and science. According to a summary written by Peter Merkel, only one tenth of one out of ten German students graduate from this academic high school. According to Merkel, the majority of German students attend instead some sort of post-primary school. And it's these that provide the major source of students for the specialized institutes of higher education. One the major track leading to these specialized institutes is a six-year program offering a mixture of academic and business training. Another track involves a five-year general school, followed by three years of on-the-job training for workers in the trades and technicians in some sort of vocational experience. In other words, after age 14, nearly all of these students, both male and female, attend some sort of apprenticeship program, an apprenticeship program that's supervised by a trade master, and it ends in an examination. In a funny sort of way, it's a mixture of a British, British and French traditions. And one takes an examination, whether one is going to go become a carpenter or a, a steel worker or a, even a hairdresser or a nanny. Some states have located all three tracks inside of a single facility, similar to an American high school, but the, the experiences are, are far more competitive given this exam system. The upshot of all this is that when the specialized institutes were upgraded to higher education, the move provided an additional career pathway for those students who, who came up through the academic secondary schools. In addition to the higher technical institutes and universities, they could also now go to the specialized institute. The continuing close link between education and industry in Germany is indicated by the fact that, that education in a specialized institute has included two 26-week periods of practical training on the job, which are often called workshops. Now, these periods of practical training contrast significantly with the American co-op system or cooperative education system because these positions are not temporary add-ons in companies which may or may not have jobs for the co-op students when they arrive, but are very much integrated into the routine production system. And this is a system that is inscribed in state law. Consider text, for example, from the Bavarian Higher Education Act, quote, the polytechnic institutes with their practice-oriented training enable students to independently apply scientific methods and artistic skills in their professions, end quote. Now that language sounds like something that a professional society might make, but certainly not something in state law. Visitors who come to the specialized institutes can pretty quickly see this emphasis on quality and particularly on precision in the application of, of methods and skills and scientific technology to industrial problems. For example, at the specialized institute in Frankfurt, 
Students produce, engineering students produce metal and plastic uh, machine pieces for industrial machinery. When Professor Lucena visited a workshop at that school, the training supervisor showed him with great pride the parts that students had made for a, from, for a damaged pump that had been produced, manufactured by Siemens. When a customer had returned this damaged pump to Siemens, the company, rather than fixing the pump in their own plant, sent the pump to be repaired by the students. Even instruction in the, in the engineering sciences tends to emphasize visual understanding and a feel for the materials involved. For example, in contrast with the US emphasis on mathematical problem solving, students who are in their first semester may be asked to visualize the forces and the torques that go into a system saving the mathematical calculations, which is, a, which is prior in the US context, saving these for later. Until the engineering students have learned to quote unquote, get a feel for the forces and for the torques. Not surprisingly then, the, the faculty at the specialized institutes are almost entirely teachers who have as many as 18 con contact hours with students per week. In sharp contrast with an average of six, contact hours per week in the, in the United States. Incidentally, um, all the graduates of the universities and the higher technical institutes have to complete a thesis, and they receive a degree that is comparable to the master's degree in the United States. And for the technical students in this context, the focus on, on um, applied problem solving continues throughout the curriculum into the thesis. So the students there who are completing this master's thesis at the Higher Technical Institute tend to select industri industry-oriented problems for their, th from, for their theses from a set of options that is given to them by their professors. Professors who regularly serve as consultants for industry. The ties here between the faculty and industry are very close. For example, as a professor at the Technical Institute of a University, rather, of Munich, put it, who was also, by the way, vice president of engineering in a major German aerospace company at the same time, quote, in German technical universities, we have a different way of solving engineering problems for industry than in the United States. In Germany, you, as a university faculty member, work like part of their research department. It's a very significant difference here. Students who are seeking to become professors have, after completing this master's degree, have first to go on to complete a doctoral degree in four or five years. And then they continue on into several years of postgraduate education where they have to complete what is basically a second doctoral degree and a second doctoral dissertation. These students are often in their late 30s or 40s before they can compete for a faculty position as a professor. <coughs> 